all human groups throughout the ages have known of the planet Mars. Most of them didn't actually know what it really was, but they were aware of that strange, bright, moving reddish-tinged light in the sky. In more modern times, we determined that Mars was indeed another planet, like Earth. Subsequently, we have learned a huge amount about Mars during the Space Age, finding it to be a desert world with a thin atmosphere, but bearing the hallmarks of having once had oceans in the distant past, and at that time a thicker atmosphere, making past Mars look a lot like current Earth in many ways. But those conditions were fleeting. Mars simply doesn't have the mass and the position in the solar system to maintain that as long as Earth has been able to. Mars simply dried out and lost a huge amount of its atmosphere because it had no choice, as it is about half the size of Earth and lacks the gravity needed for long-term stability as a habitable world. But what Mars does show us is that Earth is not unique in being a water world. There is a whole subset of Fermi Paradox solutions that deal in the rare Earth hypothesis, but they almost always glance past the fact that the star system hosted between two to three surface oceanic worlds. Two of them, Venus and Mars, simply didn't stay that way long term. But if you'd have visited the solar system early in its history, Earth, Venus, and Mars would have looked basically the same. Oceans and land, and in those days, wildly active volcanoes. In the early days, however, both Earth and Mars are thought to have had hydrogen-rich atmospheres. Neither planet can hold on to hydrogen, it slowly gets stripped away. But for a time, they both had thicker atmospheres incorporating it, so it's thought. Both planets at that time had a lot of surface iron in its metallic form. In the case of Earth, its surface iron sat around as a mostly stable metal. It does react in other ways without life, but most of it is thought to have been around until the great oxygenation event. It then became an oxygen sink, meaning that the iron rusted until all surface iron was oxidized. So the currently rusty Earth was made so largely by life, but there's a problem. Mars is very obviously rusted as well. Iron oxide is what gives Mars its visibly red color that humans since time immemorial have associated with it, but we don't actually know for sure just how that happened. What exactly rusted Mars? This is still an open question and it has a complication. Mars being smaller than Earth is thought to have had more surface iron as the planet would not have differentiated as much as Earth did. This means that less of the iron on the surface would have sunk to the core due to the lower gravity. So Mars had a comparatively higher percentage of iron to get rid of. We also know that whatever rusted the iron at Mars is no longer active. The various rovers have discovered iron meteorites on the surface of Mars that are shiny and unoxidized. So whatever happened, it's done for now. One idea is the water oceans of Mars. These would have added a significant amount of water vapor to the atmosphere of Mars, but again, due to the lower gravity, it would have had a different profile than Earth in that the vapor would have reached much higher into the atmosphere at greater concentrations than happens here. This would have exposed the water molecules to the ultraviolet radiation of the sun and would have caused the molecules to break down and disassociate, leaving free oxygen in the atmosphere. Free oxygen and metallic iron means rust. The problem is that you're going to need a lot of free oxygen persisting for a very long period of time to rust iron-rich Mars and turn it red. So there are questions as to if there was enough water vapor to really account for it all. There are other competing explanations for the rusting process, but it does stand out that whatever did it, it rusted an entire planet very efficiently. This line of thinking actually might help solve another mystery of Mars where all that water that appears to have once been there went. Maybe some part of the answer is that it was broken down. The oxygen went into the rust and the hydrogen escaped. But it also has to be kept in mind that what rusted Earth was its photosynthetic life. And given the Earth-like conditions of early Mars, it too is a candidate for having hosted at least microbial, possibly photosynthesizing life. If we never find evidence of that, however, it'll be interesting to see what other geologic processes might have been involved in the rusting. Maybe it was a mixed bag of causes that all came together. But I will say this, if life turned Mars red, and the red planet has been staring us in the face screaming, I once had life, for our entire existence as a species, I would find that rather ironic to say the least. 
Two rusting planets at the same time in the same star system, completely at the absolute unrelenting mercy of the planets, is a universe I can enjoy thinking about. Today, Mars, were it sapient, might breathe a sigh of relief that it's over, while poor Earth still fights it as its bicycles and old Chrysler LeBarons rust hopelessly away. But that's only the beginning of the outstanding mysteries of the planet Mars, and many of these mysteries might have connections with each other. Another strange outstanding mystery is that the north and southern hemispheres of Mars are very different from each other, so the highlands in the southern hemisphere are overall an average of 5 kilometers taller than the north, and the crust itself is very much thicker by tens of kilometers. This is difficult to explain at first glance. One option is that there's something about the Martian crust that isn't currently very evident that defined it. The Martian crust appears to be a single plate, meaning it has no plate tectonics. But the sharp boundary between the north and south topography and geology might indicate that Mars might once have had some kind of plate tectonics going on. But there really should be other evidence for that, and there isn't. Another possibility is that it's somehow impact related, and that Mars underwent a huge impact early on, not unlike Earth's impact with Thea that is thought to have formed the moon. But there should be other evidence of that kind of an impact at Mars, and so far, there isn't any. It's also been suggested that Mars's internal heat was somehow unevenly distributed early on, and there was some kind of hot mantle plume that is responsible for the differences. Which incidentally, that plume might also have been impact related. That might have thickened the crust unevenly. It seems likely, however, that this mystery may eventually be solved with further study of the geology and seismic activity of current Mars. We just don't currently have a complete enough picture. Another mystery is methane on Mars. Finding methane on Mars was huge news because methane is a biosignature gas. The problem is, it's also a geologically produced gas, an example being serpentinization, which is a mineral chemical process that releases the gas. But with Mars, this is really murky in that the data is inconsistent and no one knows why. Methane was first observed at Mars by ESA's Mars Express Orbiter about 20 years ago. The gas was also detected at surface level by NASA's Curiosity rover. Case closed? No, because the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter, which is a joint ESA-Roscosmos probe, saw no significant amount of methane at all. So you've got a rover seeing methane on the surface, and an orbiter not seeing it at all. It's very unclear why this is, but hidden within the annals of astronomy is a curious incident involving methane at Mars, that shows that it might actually be transient, and in a somewhat hard to explain way. Geologic ideas for this are straightforward. It may simply be that the transient Martian methane is old methane, that's trapped below the surface that sometimes gets released, perhaps as a result of a seismic event. Methane can do things like this on Earth, most famously in the formation of a kind of methane ice on the seafloor called a clathrate, and those can result in methane releases. Perhaps something similar is happening with subsurface Mars. But there's a problem. The methane blooms appear to be seasonal. That aspect is nothing short of a head-scratcher, because while it's conceivable that some sensitive geologic process might respond to seasonal conditions, it doesn't seem very likely. Geology just likes to do what geology does on its own terms. The best option appears to be seasonal melting or breaking of subsurface ice that results in releases of methane from below the ice. But it has to be noted that these seasonal methane blooms might indicate the presence of subsurface microbial life still persisting deep below the surface of Mars. Life as we well know from Earth can act seasonally quite easily. All we can do to answer the question is further Mars missions, culminating in humans on Mars. But before I go, there's actually another mystery about the Mars system itself beyond the planet, and this one will almost certainly be solved before 2032. It involves Mars's two tiny moons, Deimos and Phobos. We don't actually know how Mars acquired these moons. One idea is that they are captured asteroids, though that begs the question that since it managed to grab two, why is it the other terrestrial worlds never did that? Maybe proximity to the asteroid belt plays a role and they are actually both somewhat unstable. Deimos is spiraling outward, and will someday leave the orbit of Mars and head out on its own. Phobos, however, is spiraling in very slowly, and will collide with Mars in about 50 million years, not that long on geologic timescales. 
but the competing hypothesis is that they are leftover pieces of Mars ejected by an impact. It's unclear which it is, but either way we're going to find out, at least for Phobos. Japan's space agency JAXA is set to launch the MMX probe in 2026, which includes a sample return mission, which will collect material from Phobos and return it to Earth. Sample return missions have become a kind of specialty of JAXA, and they should easily reveal the origins of Phobos because if it's material from Mars itself, it will have completely different geology than a captured asteroid would have. The difference is so great here that there probably won't be much of a debate about that, and we may well have an answer within days of opening the samples. Mars has many mysteries, and these were just a few of the lesser known ones, but no doubt Mars has far more secrets that we don't yet know about than ones we do. But with Mars it seems likely that with all the exploration that we do at that world, because of its accessibility and our desire to put humans there and fully explore it, that we will solve many of these mysteries, along with learning new ones far faster than any of the solar system's other worlds. Exciting times indeed. Thanks for listening, I am Futurist and Science Fiction author John Michael Godier, currently eyeing Saturn suspiciously. It has a giant hexagon, rings of unknown origin, some very weird moons, and all manner of odd aspects. It's up next in the series later this month, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.